On today's show, the Cleveland Cavaliers and Jarrett Allen have agreed to a contract's extension. Instant analysis straight ahead on today's Locked On Cavs. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You can check out the show anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. Leave us a five-star review. Drop us a comment as well. Check us out on YouTube. Just search Locked On Cavs. If you're watching this video, hit that thumbs up button for me. and Make sure you're subscribed to the Locked On Cavs YouTube channel and click that notification bell so you get the latest Locked On Cavs content Every day that it drops, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Playoffs winding down or they're over. The Olympics going on, however. FanDuel has something for everyone every single day all summer long. That's right. FanDuel hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Hi again, everybody. I'm Danny Cunningham. You might know me from my time covering the Cleveland Cavaliers, places like 92.3 The Fan, Cleveland Magazine, and a number of other stops along the way. This is an emergency episode of, sh- of, sh- of sorts. The Cavs and Jared Allen have agreed to a three-year contract extension worth $91 million. So this extension for Jared Allen goes on. It adds on to the end of his current deal. Right now, he has two years left at $20 million per year. And then this extension will kick in. So this three-year extension really means that Jarrett Allen has a guaranteed contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers for the next five years. Five years, $131 million. That's what Jarrett Allen is signing up for. And I think that this is a great move for the Cavs. I do. And it's not because, and I know that you have heard me talk about this. This is not because I think this team is a perfect fit. I don't think this team is a perfect fit. But I think this is a great move because the Cavs and Jared Allen have agreed to a deal that I believe is less money than Jared Allen could get on the open market. I think Jared Allen is a player that is worth more than $30 million per year, which is what this new extension averages out to, especially when you start to factor in the way the salary cap is going to work in the NBA, how it's going to just keep going up and up and up and up. Jarrett Allen right now on his $20 million a year contract that he's got this year and next year, supremely underpaid. He was an all-star caliber player this year. I expect that to continue. And if he were to hit the open market, I think he's probably a guy that he's not a max contract player. He's not. But I think he's probably someone that gets between 32 and $35 million a year from a team with cap space. So the Cavs getting him to sign up for a deal that averages out to be about $30 million a year is what I think a big win for the Cavs. Whether you think that they that he and Evan Mobley can work together, he and Evan Mobley can't work together, whatever you think about that front court pairing, you should be happy about this because this is a deal that while it might not make the Cavs better today, while it might not increase the ceiling for the Cavs in the 2024-2025 season, this is a deal that I believe is going to pay dividends down the line. And there's a few reasons why I think that. One, let's be real about Jared Allen. He's a really good basketball player. He is. This past year, I thought he played at an all-star level. I thought he was, and I know he made the all-star team, what was that, in 2022. He was an all-star. And that was awesome. I thought he was better this year than he was that year. I thought that this past season truly was the best basketball of his career. He was dependable. You could count on him during the regular season. Even in the playoff games that he played, those first four games against Orlando, there was a case to be made that he was the best player on the Cavs. There was a case to be made that he had a better first four games of that series before he exited with a rib injury and did not play the rest of the postseason. You could have made the case that he was having a better series than Donovan Mitchell. He, after, you know, the comments Mitchell Robinson made the year before about how the lights were too bright and, you know, Jared Allen echoed that after that series was over, after those comments and stuff, I thought he stepped up to the plate this year and in the playoffs. And yeah, that injury was a bummer. It kept him out from everything I've heard. It was very painful for him. He was, it was not something that 
he could just really play through that easily. But he was really good. And that's the first thing you have to remember here is that the Cavs got a contract extension to a really good basketball player. They got another, and this has been the theme of their offseason. I think it's a little bit different with Evan Mobley because it's his first big deal. It's his first contract extension. But let's recap this offseason real quick. Donovan Mitchell signs an extension, says, I want to spend the best years of my career with the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? That is the thing that should make you the happiest about this, this offseason, the fact that that happened. Fast forward to today. Jared Allen says, by, by agreeing to this extension, he, he says, I want to spend the best years of my career in Cleveland. That's what he says. That stuff matters. Yeah. Are the Cavs a perfectly built team? I don't think so. I know that there are some of you that do believe that the Cavs can win this way, and that's fine. There's, I think they can. I don't know how likely it is. I don't know if this is the most likely path towards a championship, but I do think they could get there, and it's going to depend, I think, a lot on Evan Mobley, personally, but signing up Jared Allen... I think is a really good thing for this team. And we'll talk about this a little bit later in this episode, but just because Jared Allen signs this deal with the Cavs does not mean that he's going to complete this deal with the Cavs. And that is something that is, it's worth remembering here. Just because he signed up this extension does not mean that he finishes this extension in Cleveland. So this is something that I do think, the other thing this tells me, this immediately made me think of the higher the Cavs made for Kenny Atkinson, bringing Kenny Atkinson is in as the head coach, because we all know the story at this point. Kenny Atkinson and Jarrett Allen were together in Brooklyn. Part of the reason why Kenny Atkinson lost his job, was pushed out, whatever you want to talk about the way it ended with the Nets, is because he wanted to start Jarrett Allen over DeAndre Jordan. Obviously, I think we could all agree that was the right move. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant didn't view that as the right move, but anyone I think that is watching or listening to the show probably agrees that would have been the right move. I certainly wholeheartedly think that would have been. I think this, this move, the fact that one, the Cavs wanted to extend Jared Allen, two, Jared Allen wanted to stay in Cleveland, I think it points to Kenny Atkinson having a lot of belief that Jared Allen is going to continue to play at an all-star level, that Kenny Atkinson really wants Jared Allen in Cleveland. And I also think that it points to Jarrett Allen believing in Kenny Atkinson and Jarrett Allen wanting to be here. Because if you are Jarrett Allen and you can see the writing on the wall where Evan Mobley is supposed to be a star player and Donovan Mitchell obviously already is a superstar, Darius Garland should have a bounce back here. You're not someone that's going to be in a star role in Jarrett Allen. You're just not. But the fact that he believes that much in this organization that much in the roster, that much in the coaching staff, that much in the front office. That's something that I think you should really be excited about as a Cavs fan. Whether or not it's a perfect fit, we can talk about that. We will talk about that. We've talked about that all offseason. That's a different conversation. But the theme of this offseason has been that the best players on the Cavs have said, I want to spend the best years of my career in Cleveland. They may not have verbalized that, but they've said that through their actions. And I think that, if you're a fan of this organization, that is such a welcome sight. Because for a long time, that hasn't been the case. But right now, that is such a welcome sight that the Cavs have had all-star players this summer say, I want to I want to spend the very best years of my NBA career in Cleveland with the Cavaliers. That should matter to you. Now, from a basketball perspective, let's talk about that fit because... Obviously, this is a team, they've got two bigs. It's something worth thinking about. Um, you have to think about that anytime. What, what Kenny Atkinson can do with them. And now, obviously, the core four is locked in, right? We went into this offseason, and I talked about this when I first started talking to you guys every day on this show, where Cavs president of basketball operations, Kobe Altman, said in his end of season availability, he didn't see a reason to break up the core four. Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. Didn't see a reason to break those guys up. Didn't see a reason to break up Evan Mobley and Jared Allen in the front court. Didn't see a reason to break up Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland in the back court. And I personally did not take him at his word there. I thought, okay, this is just sort of, you know, 
trying to play his cards correctly, to protect trade value, to protect that locker room should things stay the way they are. I was wrong. Obviously, I was wrong. I thought going into this offseason, there was definitely less than a 50% chance that the core four would play a game together again in a Cavs uniform. That's going to happen opening night, as long as everybody's healthy, because you can't trade down of Mitchell, can't trade of Moby, you can't trade Jared Allen now. These guys are locked in. Darius Garland's going to be on this Cavs team. That is, that is a lot to take in. Um, I'm certainly still digesting this, but I've got thoughts about why this is a good move from a basketball perspective next, right here on Locked on Cavs. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. You love sports. If you're watching or listening, of course you love sports. So that means you might want to have a little bit of action, uh, some just a little bit more reason to root for your favorite team. And FanDuel is the place to go for that. FanDuel this summer too, and this is really important. I got to get this. I got to tell you about this first. But they're hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. Every day. Boost, bonus, something. They're hooking you up every day all summer long. Head on over to FanDuel.com and you can start making the most out of your summer, whether it's baseball, whether it's the Olympics, when the WNBA returns. We've got preseason football, the Hall of Fame game, Thursday. FanDuel's got you covered. FanDuel's the place to go all summer long. When you want to get more out of your summer, FanDuel is the place to go for it. I've talked to you about the Cleveland Guardians. Not crazy about what they did, at the trade deadline, I thought they, you know, I would have liked to see them grab just a little bit more pitching. I'm not crazy confident about them going into October, but you know, they've got the best record in baseball as I sit here right now. So maybe now is the time if you want to head on over to FanDuel Sportsbook and you want to check out, okay, well, what are the Guardians right now if I think they can win the World Series? What are the Guardians right now if I think that they can win the American League pennant? Go on over to FanDuel and you will see exactly what you could get the Guardians at because now might be a good time to jump on it. Yeah, the trade deadline was underwhelming just a little bit, but just because they didn't make a big splash doesn't mean that they shouldn't be better than plus 1800. There's some value there on FanDuel. So go to FanDuel.com, check that out. And again, a boost or bonus for all customers daily, all summer long. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So this deal for Jarrett Allen means that he cannot be traded. Um, I'm not sure if this is a deal that means he can't be traded for a year or if it's of the six-month variety. If it's of the six-month variety, that would leave a week roughly. I believe the trade deadline is set for February 6th this year. He certainly cannot be traded for at least six months after signing this deal, which to my knowledge, this deal has only been agreed upon. It has not been signed as I record this. So once that's signed, he can't be traded for six months. So say he doesn't sign this deal until August 7th. That means you have to wait six months to trade him, which takes you to February 7th, which is past the trade deadline. So this deal locks in the core four. Donovan Mitchell can't be traded. Evan Mobley's not getting traded. Jared Allen can't be traded. Darius Garland's not getting traded. This group is going to be playing basketball together again. And I think that now we are really going to learn a lot about Kenny Atkinson. I think we're going to learn a lot about him as a coach, a lot about how he's going to be able to play with two bigs. I don't think that's something he's done a ton of in his career. I think that there's some, if you're watching the Olympics right now too, I think there's some interesting stuff. And obviously the skill sets are not the same, but there's some interesting stuff that France does offensively. And Kenny Atkinson, of course, is an assistant coach with the French national team. But they're playing two bigs in Rudy Gobert and Victor Wembanyama. The Cavs will be playing two bigs in Jarrett Allen and Evan Mobley. The biggest difference, aside from Wemby just being an absolute freak, is that France's guard play is really lackluster and the Cavs have excellent guard play in Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell. So I don't know how much there is to take away from that. But I do think, if nothing else, that will be great experience for Kenny in terms of playing with two guard or with two bigs. I think that is an awesome thing just to keep an eye out for if you're interested in. But we are going to find out can this team play faster with two bigs on the floor? 
That's a big question that I have. And now we know what this roster is going to look like. Now we know this team's going to be playing two bigs quite a bit. I'm also very curious. What do the minutes constructions look like? What do rotations look like? I guess would be a better way to phrase it where this is something that, okay, how much center is Evan Mobley going to be playing? When is Evan Mobley going to start be playing more center? Because I think that could be a key to his success. I think there's a lot of questions here that we're going to find out, but I do think ultimately, and when I had Matt and Nick on earlier this week, and we talked about how Nick's hot take was that the Cavs were going to be a playing team. Now, the fact that they're running back this core four, I think that giving Jared Allen an extension raises the floor of the Cavaliers. I do. Because now you've got three guys in that locker room that just got paid, that feel secure, that there's still motivation to win, but they don't have to worry about, okay, well, I got to do this to get my next contract. I have to you know, score X number of points or grab X number of rebounds. I have to do all this and I have to make it about me to get my next contract. There's not going to be any of that in that locker room. And I think that is a really good thing. And then the fourth guy in Darius Garland is coming off of a nightmare of a season and wants to prove that he's not that guy, that he is an all-star caliber player. He's not the version of himself that was out there last year. So those are things to think about. The downside, I think, to this is I don't know how much higher the ceiling for the Cavs is this year than it was last year. Because... Obviously, to this point, the only outside addition they've made is Jalen Tyson, who they took at number 20 overall. That matters. They haven't gone out and signed anybody. Obviously, Isaac Okoro in that situation has yet to resolve itself. But how much is coaching going to affect them going from a team that made it to the second round of the playoffs to a team in the conference finals, a team in the NBA finals? I don't know that I see that avenue this year. That doesn't mean it can't be accomplished in the history of this era in this era of Cavs basketball, but I don't know how I see that happening this year because I do think a way, and you know, we talked a few weeks ago about trading for Brandon Ingram and how Jared Allen would be that guy to be moved for that deal. That obviously cannot, will not happen now. I thought that was a way where, yeah, maybe the Cavs could take a step back, but if they get the most out of everybody, I could see the ceiling for next year being higher. And I don't see that now. So if you want to look at a negative, that's probably the negative to look at here. Maybe this is something that doesn't allow Evan to develop offensively for a a little bit more. I don't know. I think that there are a lot of question marks that need to be answered, but I don't think a lot of those questions have to do with the guys on the roster. I think they have to do with the guy on the bench. I think that this deal now does put some pressure on Kenny Atkinson to get this right, to Make sure that he gets more out of this team than J.B. Bickerstaff did with, for all intents and purposes, is the same team. I think there is pressure on Kenny Atkinson to have a more evolved offense, which I believe that he will, and to to get this team to gel together in a way that the previous head coach couldn't on the floor. I think there is pressure there for that to happen. And that is the thing that certainly I will be watching for. But I don't know just how much the ceiling changes from last year to this year. I don't know how much it changes. I think it's something that, you know, I, I, I'm i higher on the Cavaliers than I think a lot of people. I think they're going to win 50 games. I think they will have home court in the first round. I think they will win a playoff series. But after that, I think they need a lot of things to break their way to get to the conference finals. And when you're in year three of Donovan Mitchell in Cleveland... The conference final should be the goal. They should be the goal. If you wanted to say just making the playoffs in year one was the goal and winning a series in year two was the goal, what's that say about this year? It says this team should be taking a step forward. I don't know that they have. But I do think in the long term, in the long run, today is a very, very good day for the Cavs. I don't know if it's a great day for the 24-25 season, but for the future of the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think it's a great day. Just because Jarrett Allen signed this extension does not mean Jarrett Allen is going to be on the team when that contract ends. I want to talk about that next on today's Locked on Cavs. So 
So the one thing, and thank you again for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every day. If you're checking this out as an emergency episode, make sure you hit subscribe. If you're listening, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else, make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. Like this video, hit that notification bell too. So the thing that jumps out, I think every time someone signs a contract extension or agrees to a contract extension, is wow, the Cavs are committing to this for the long term. That is not what this is. The Cavs are agreeing to give Jared Allen this amount of money if he's still on the team for that long. Jared Allen has guaranteed himself $131 million over the next five years. And that is awesome for Jared Allen. It's so great to see him get paid. It's also so great to see the Cavs commit to spending that amount of money. Like, as things stand right now, they've got five players that will be making that, and they're already over the cap in the first year this extension will kick in. So that's something to think about. This is a sign that the Cavs are not going to be scared to go into the tax. I don't think they're going to go into the tax this upcoming season, but they're not scared to go into the tax. They're not going to be scared to go into the tax in the future because they're they're not going to have a choice. They won't. They're going to be a very expensive team with the contracts of Donovan and Darius and Evan and now Jared. They're going to be very, very expensive. And Max Struess is still on the books at that point too. But I think that there's a case to be made that Jarrett Allen got more tradable today. Now, I know what I said last segment that, oh, the Cavs can't trade him for six months. You're right. I don't think they were going to trade him this year anyways. I th- at one point, I did think they would, and I thought they should, but I don't think that they wanted to do that. I think Kenny Atkinson wanted to have Jared Allen on this team. But as the years go on, I think he becomes more tradable because if you would have traded Jared Allen this summer, you would be trading him to a new team and that team would be getting Jared Allen for this year and next year. And then who knows? He would hit free agency. Now, if you trade Jared Allen, say it doesn't go that well for the Cavs. Say this doesn't go as planned. If you trade Jared Allen now, or a year from now, excuse me, the team that trades for him has Jared Allen for four years. Four years. That's a really good place to be. And part of the reason why I didn't think this would get done, why I didn't think the Cavs would be able to extend Jared Allen was not because he's not a good player, not because he's not worth an extension, not because they didn't want to extend him, not because Jared Allen didn't want to be in Cleveland. I didn't think this would get done because I think Jared's value on the open market is worth more than he agreed to today. I think if he were to be on the open market, he'd probably get between 32 and $35 million. This contract is an average of $30 million per year. Simple math, right? So if the Cavs were to look into trading him and he continues playing at the level that he's played at, a team would still be getting a great value with multiple years left on a contract. I think that if the Cavs do decide at some point in the next couple of years, if they decide, hey, we gave this core for a, a real good shot. We tried our best. Just Evan Mobley can't develop the way Evan Mobley needs to develop if Jared Allen's here. I think they will be able to fetch more in return for Jared Allen at that point than they would have had they traded him this summer. And I think that alone makes this a win. If it works out on the court, that's great. That's what you want to see. But if it doesn't work out on the court, if they can't get to the level they need to get to as a team, I think Jared Allen could be worth more next summer or two summers from now than he is right now on the trade de- on the trade market. And I think this is a really, really good contract. I think that this is a contract that is going to age very, very well for the Cavs. I think overall, this is a really good move. It might not be a move that pays dividends this upcoming season. But I do think at some point, the Cavs will be very, very, very happy they got Jared Allen to agree to this contract extension. I'm a little surprised that he didn't want to wait to get to free agency. And it's not that the Cavs didn't want to pay him more too. I I need to make that clear. It's that there are rules in terms of how much you can extend for. So when you're a player in Jared Allen's situation, 
you are allowed to sign a contract extension that is worth 140 million or 140 percent of the last deal or the last year on your current deal. So Jared Allen, when he signed that that contract extension before, right after the Cavs traded for him, that was a five year deal worth 100 million dollars, and it was flat. It was 20 million dollars a year for five years, no raises. No decreases in pay, just $20 million a year. So because it was that instead of if that contract would have still been $100 million, but if it would have been increasing in value to where, say, he's making, I don't know, $25 million that last year, then the Cavs could have paid him more. But because it's 20, they can start a contract extension for him at 140% of what he was making. So 140% of $20 million is $28 million. That's where this contract extension will start. And then there will be increases in this one. So the first year of this deal will be of the extension will be $28 million. The, the year after that will be $30 million. After that will be $32 million. And that's how you get up to that three year $91 million extension. So that's just how things are working on the back end. But because they had to start at $28 million, I wasn't sure a deal could get done because I think he's worth more than that on the open market. Like I think if he got into free agency, he could have gotten $33 million, 35, 32, whatever in that first year instead of $28 million. So I do think while he's getting a big raise here, he's also, the Cavs are getting him at a bit of a discount. And I think that's a really good thing. I will have more on this. This is my instant reaction. We will have more Jarrett Allen content coming as the week rolls along, but I wanted to get this out there. I wanted to get my instant thoughts on the Jarrett Allen contract extension to you guys as soon as I possibly could. So again, thank you for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every day. Find the show, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, everywhere. Five stars, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I will have more Jared Allen stuff as things roll along. But once again, thank you for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every single day.